Friday 1300 hours, after about a week of planning my dealer and I are getting ready to embark on an adventure of epic proportions. We pack the car and do a final check of essentials. We plan to attend a side trance slash music festival and consume some of and sell the rest of the following, over the two nights three days of the festival. 20 tabs LSD 30 grams shrooms 5 gram extracted mescaline 500 milligrams of 2CB 5 to 6 grams MDMA 500 milligrams DMT 3 grams ketamine What I ended up consuming myself 5 tabs LSD 10 grams shrooms 1 gram extracted mescaline About 100 milligrams of 2CB 1.5 grams MDMA 3 hits DMT Smoked Not sure of dosage But I was fuckered up And lastly 6 bumps of K 1500 hours We arrive set up tent etc and consume 2 grams of mushrooms each They come on fairly quick and seem to be nice and mellow the rest of the afternoon was spent hiking in the mountains surrounding the venue. We meditated on a rocket sunset and I felt good about obliterating my mind. 1830. Upon returning to our tent the music had started and I was feeling very cool, my mind was at ease and my body felt good I had not had many visuals yet. We consumed another 3 grams of mushrooms each and 3 tabs of LSD. We decided to go explore the dance area. I could feel both the LSD and the mushrooms fighting for dominance and had to lie down. I explained to my friend dealer who I will call D from here on. I found a soft spot and lay back. As my body hit the ground it felt as though everything was sinking in beneath me, in a good way, as waves of euphoria and the tingly acid sensation washed over my body. I have no idea how long I lay there, but I traversed time and space in my mind, I was soaring with nebulas and dancing with the cosmos. I eventually felt energetic and jumped up, a head rush followed that can only be described as my soul trying to pop out my skull plus 2100 hours. I found D, after roaming around like a madman for I don't know how long. He was happy to see me and handed me two more tabs of acid and gave me a cap of 2CB. I downed them all. We went for another walk up the mountains. It was pitch dark so we needed to bring a torch. The torchlight on the grass was insane it kept jumping up and dancing in the sky. We reached the rock we had meditated at earlier and I needed to sit down as I was feeling a little woozy. As I looked around everything seemed a lot more evil than it was earlier, even D's demeanor had changed. I asked him something and he just mumbled back. I had a sudden fear that a demon or something had dragged me here to this rock. I kept seeing flashes of blood splattered everywhere, and I swore I could hear myself scream. I was breathing very heavily, and D said I should sit down. He took out some MDMA and said we should sniff some to clear the bad vibes. I sniffed two medium-sized lines, and almost instantly felt like a purple cloud had descended on me. Everything was so happy and different to how it was not two minutes earlier. I could talk easier and we even hugged for a few minutes. We began talking about our lives and how him and I are so different, yet are the same people on psychedelics. I swear I could feel his thoughts at this point. I tried to explore this more but got a very sharp metallic taste in my mouth, and an intense headache. We decided we needed some water and headed back to the tent. 1 o'clock. We are back at the tent, and there are a few other people sitting around talking to the other people we met there. I was surprised at how easy I was talking to people. Eventually D decided we should all smoke some DMT. I have only done it twice before, and was a bit unsure, but we went into the tent and he took out a pipe lighter and a small baggie of DMT. He said I should go first. He held the pipe and lit the small amount of DMT sitting on top of some parsley looking stuff. I inhaled deeply. The first taste was the distinctly acrid plasticy taste of DMT, I almost vomited but managed to keep it all in. I exhaled, but before the smoke had even left my mouth I could feel the pull of the floor. The tent swirled like ice cream at a parlor and before I knew it I was engulfed in whiteness and marbled lines like the architecture of a distant world far beyond our understanding. I could hear singing slash ringing everywhere. And could hear my name, although it wasn't, but I simply recognized it as my name. It was a woman's voice and I tried to locate it, but there were patterns swirling everywhere in my vision. It was getting hard to focus on anything for longer than a second before it moved away. There were pulsating, not correct word, but closest to what I saw, colors everywhere. Bright yellows and oranges they were changing shades and eventually I managed to move past them and was met by a massive tower-like structure. The woman's voice was coming from inside the tower. I tried to walk but was held back by something. The colors were fading and as I turned to see what it was the tent became clear again. I remember sitting up and I was sweating quite a bit. 
I relaxed for the next 10 minutes trying to understand what was going on. I tried to write down the experience, in point form but lost interest halfway through. 145. I thanked D and left the tent to go walk around as I was leaving D shouted and asked if I wanted more drugs. I said I would take some with me in case we got separated. He gave me some more 2CB and a capsule of MDMA. I took the 2CB and went to the stream nearby to relax and try to think. I lay on the ground, I could hear frogs croaking, but they sounded like machines or something, I closed my eyes and focused on their croaks. They seemed to get louder until it was unbearable, I screamed and they stopped. In my head I imagined that my scream had ended everything. I wanted to see what I had done, as it was so quiet, I could not even hear the sound of the music, only my heartbeat. Instead I decided I would recreate the world in my mind. At this point I became immersed in my own mind, I was creating the earth like a god it was swirling masses of rocks and I compacted them. I formed mountains, I flew through canyons I was carving with my mind. All in all I was the universe, I was God, I was the gods, I could understand everything that had happened, everything that was to happen and why. I knew I had a place in the world, and that I was just as important as a god because I came from something resembling a god. I gripped the grass around me tightly and ripped up handfuls of earth. The ground was cold and damp, as I made the connection to what I had done, the frogs croaking became clear again. And I opened my eyes. The first signs of dawn were clearly visible as orangey pinky glows in the distance. I washed my hands in the stream and ventured off to find D. When I found him he told me I had been gone for about 3 hours. I was surprised as I thought I had been gone about an hour tops. We relaxed at the tent and spoke to each other about a lot of shit. 5.30. We decided to go for a swim and clear our heads. I took the other MDMA cap and had another line, hoping to keep up a happy mindset as things were starting to turn nasty again. I stepped into the stream and my feet felt like they had been dipped in liquid nitrogen, the sensation persisted as I went in deeper. I washed quickly as it was freezing. While drying myself it felt like the towel was rejuvenating me while I rubbed it vigorously over my body. I felt great. I looked at the and we plodded off again. 6.30. We returned to the tent and debated trying to sleep, we decided it would be impossible. We decided however that it was now time to go dance. But not before some K. I had a small bum. It burned a little. It was beginning to take effect almost instantly as it felt like my head was expanding and floating at the same time I lay down and tried to forget about it. I noticed small clouds in the dawn line of the sky, they comforted me. There were disturbances in my peripheral vision, there had been all night. These were different though. I suddenly felt very uncomfortable and my head started to float away again. I looked down at my shoes and they seemed like I was looking through binoculars backwards. I immediately jumped up, wobbled and fell over again. I was kneeling with my head in my hands. I could feel my face moving further away from my head, I couldn't stop it. I was trying so hard to keep it from disappearing, I imagined myself running after it like a kid chasing a helium balloon. I cried out for D he came up and pulled me to my feet. He kept saying it would be okay. I believed him. He helped me walk to the tent. I lay there for quite some time, playing in my mind. I eventually felt good enough to stand up, but for some reason wanted more K. I had another two bumps and collapsed onto the bed. For the next hour I was obliterated I can't even begin to describe the things that went on in my head. The tent wasn't real, I wasn't real. Nothing was real. I watched the universe being born and then traveled through millions of years of the universe's development in split seconds. I arrived at the exact point I was at and jolted upright. I got up and needed to go outside. 9 o'clock. I went to dance for a bit and found D sitting playing with one of those you open and it's a ball of interconnected plastic, and you close it and it like a star. He gave it to me and I danced with it. I felt so good, and could feel the MDMA slightly. I asked D for more as I was enjoying dancing so much. He gave me what was my last two capsules. I gobbled them up and went to sit down as I felt sick, they hit me so quickly. It couldn't have been more than 10 minutes. I jumped and danced for what must have been close to an hour. 10.30. I needed to eat even though I wasn't hungry, but I felt weak. I opted for some fruit, it didn't taste of much, but I could feel the goodness coursing through my veins. After a fair amount of watermelon and some mango. I was ready to vomit, so I walked it off. I was feeling bouncy and lively, and danced for a short while, until my stomach started to cramp. I needed to lie down. I went to the first soft spot I had found the previous evening and lay there rubbing my stomach. It felt so good, and was helping a lot. I got up and went back to the dance floor D was gone. I went to the tent and found him sorting out shrooms to go sell. 
We sold shrooms and some acid for a while. 1400 hours. We got back to the tent after walking around and selling the drugs. We decided the best thing to do was to eat some shrooms and veg out for the rest of the afternoon. We both ate 5 grams each and lay in the shade waiting for them to take effect. Most of the acid was still going but everything else had faded, the MDMA was still giving me very nice euphoria. I felt the familiar leg spasms of mushrooms and the discomfort in my stomach. My vision started to go all soft and hazy, I realized my eyes were trying to close, so I closed them and voyaged into my mind again. I assumed he was going through the same thing as he was quiet as well. I tried to delve into my mind and as I traversed the quarters of my mind it became apparent that I needed to change. I was a disgusting person, who had destroyed my life with drugs. I argued with this thought and figured it could go very awry at this point. I opened my eyes and the same evil from earlier had returned. I was freaking out, I looked at my hands and didn't believe they were mine. I looked at D lying next to me, he looked happy with a smile on his face, I was jealous I wanted to be happy. I got up and went into the tent and lay down again. Everything was closing in on me, I could hear people laughing at me outside. The world was mocking me. I closed my eyes and tried to break through this funk. I came to the conclusion that I was feeling guilty because of all the drugs I had taken, and promised myself never to do it again. I couldn't have been very honest with myself as the feelings of anger and guilt grew stronger. D opened the tent and I almost fucking died of fright. He burst out laughing, and eventually so did I. I asked him if I could have more K to shift the focus of my trip. He obliged with two small bums. I did one. The same feelings as before persisted, but they were looping in my mind, I could look at them from another perspective. I snorted the other bump and lay down again. This time my mind collapsed in on itself, and I forget the details, but I remember the tent vibrating and the stretcher that I was lying on felt like pillows stuffed with polystyrene chunks, I rolled onto the floor, and lay on my stomach. My stomach started growling, and mumbling I tried to listen to what it was saying, but it was obviously alien. I even tried communication but failed. I was cramping severely, and in a wave of brilliance decided my stomach was grumbling. But then it spoke almost an English word. For the next however long I was confused, angered and worried about my stomach. I think I may have fallen asleep, because when I opened my eyes the feeling of the K was almost gone. The mushrooms had mellowed out and D was nowhere to be seen. 1600 hours. I ate some more food and prepared myself for the mescaline and impending vomit from the come up. At this point I was unsure of proceeding with this ludicrous weekend. D convinced me that we had gotten this close to infinity that we had to go on. We spent the rest of the afternoon talking cod shit and mellowing out. 1845. We prepared ourselves mentally for the mescaline and I took two capsules which was about 500 milligrams. We went to dance while we waited for the mescaline. I know it takes a while so I was not impatient. The shrooms were still going slightly and my visuals were pretty and soft like cotton wool spirals. We danced for about an hour, but my legs were starting to feel like lead so I sat down on a hay bale. I could feel the mescaline coming on slowly and felt anxious. It was like waves of warmth moving through my limbs. My vision was getting sharper and I tried to focus on a piece of hay, I moved it around and it left long lasting trails. I was definitely fucked on the mescaline. As I became aware of the high, I felt sick and ran off to a tree where I vomited. After I washed my face I surveyed my surroundings. I was feeling really happy and noticed a crowd gathering near the dance floor. I went over and there was a fire dancer show starting. I sat in awe for at least 45 minutes, the flame seemed like molten golden amber being flung around and controlled by some magical force. I noticed Dean called him over, he was well and truly high. He was also amazed at the flames and we sat talking about how it warmed our souls to see something like that. I asked one of the girls with the fire staff if I could have a go, she obliged. I focused myself and tried my best to look confident. I managed a few spins before dropping it. I returned it to her, and was quite impressed, D was laughing, as he reckons I made the dumbest faces. We both walked to the dance floor and just swayed in the awesomeness of the beats. I had to go stand next to the speaker and feel the power of the bass. The speaker setup was 65k turbo sound rig, and was fucking loud. I pressed my back to one of the bass bins, and closed my eyes. What came next was truly amazing. It felt like I was floating. I couldn't feel the ground at all I had to open my eyes to make sure I hadn't floated off. My visuals were getting more intense and people were melting and moving to the music. I focused on one girl in particular who was dancing like she was loving left to the max. I watched her for ages, she was a goddess, a nymph, my ultimate desire. I snapped out of it and lost sight of her. 
I had to find her I plotted off and eventually was lost near the stream, I have no idea how I had got there. I lay down as I felt I might be a little overwhelmed. I faded in and out of this reality and into the next, orbs of good were swirling around my head, they were almost humming a peaceful tune, although I could have been doing this. I was in touch with myself, my inner beauty. I was electric, and amazing I felt like I could shoot lightning from my fingertips. I got up and had to find D to see if he was feeling amazing as well. He was at the tent. 2300 hours. We had been chatting for ages about random things, and how psychedelics could really be the answer to a lot of the world's problems, if anyone had ever felt like we did they would never want to harm anyone else. Let alone destroy whole countries. I had another bump of K for shits and giggles, it didn't do much apart from give me some disturbing sets of flashing lights and lightning. D asked if I wanted to hit the DMT again. I agreed. I sat on the stretcher and breathed deeply, he held the pipe to my mouth I inhaled held it and breathed out. I could feel the smoke swirling in my chest and throat, I coughed and shattered my vision, I focused on one piece and it fell to the floor it was getting closer and I was almost right on it. I kept falling and put my hand out to stop myself but was stopped by something. I saw fractals of infinite complexity, lines so thin a million of them would fit into a single strand of spiderweb. I heard the woman's voice from earlier, it was very distant this time. I turned and could see nothing but pulsating glowing colors and architectural fractals. I turned once more and there she was, a woman naked and dripping water slash mercury. She was pure, she was beautiful. I reached for her and tried to grab her hand, it was impossible too, she moved away as I moved towards her. I was getting frustrated, she whispered the word no. I felt happy as I knew now that she was unobtainable. Slowly the tent was coming back and I could hear a ringing in my ears. I woke up slumped on the floor. D was laughing, and said I was doing some fucked up things, like growling and shaking. I lit the pipe for him, and left the tent so he could enjoy the privacy. I couldn't believe how awesome I felt. My soul was glowing with love and peace, it came of waves of euphoria that can only described as God touching me. I thought back to the feelings I had on the mushrooms, and could understand them more clearly, they were dirty and horrible. The mescaline explained that I was not entirely ready for this weekend and that I was not to do it again as my life would indeed become dirty like those thoughts. It continued saying that I was experienced enough to do it, but that anything in excess is bad. I felt ashamed, and the presence grew stronger. I could feel love, pain, anger, happiness, and all my emotions as one emotion it was given a word by the presence but I have forgotten it. I was told that I have a lot to give to this world and should not let the pursuit of a high stop me from being the best person I can. I agreed. I snapped out of it as D walked up behind me. He handed me another two capsules of mescaline and said he was going to go fuck out in the tent. I took them and decided to go do the same. 5 o'clock. I awoke out of a haze of unconscious consciousness. I have no idea how long I lay there in tent for. I can't even describe the things I had done in my mind. I looked at my watch and freaked out. I had been lying there for the whole night. I think my body's tiredness was too much to handle. I was still very clearly fucked on the mescaline and went to watch the sunrise. I yanked D out of his sleeping bag, and we went up to the rock. He was not talkative, and neither was I but we seemed to communicate without words. We sat in awe of the sunrise. He pulled out the rest of the can I refused any more. He had a bump and we both just sat in silence for what seemed like ages, I could see ants working, bugs doing their thing and suddenly felt guilty about work. Which was the next day. I put it out my mind and continued to watch things going about their comical business. For the rest of the morning we didn't do much apart from smoke a few joints and eat some food. D was convinced some of his soul had been stolen. I on the other hand felt like my soul had been given a second chance, another chance to be great. I told him he was being silly and that it was probably the K. He agreed, and started laughing. I said we should do it again next week jokingly, I think he almost fell off his chair, until I said it was a joke. He seemed very serious, and I was starting to feel uncomfortable. I said I was going to bathe in the stream. When I returned everyone was packing up, I helped and we left shortly afterwards. I was still very high in the car on the way home and watched as the scenery flitted by. I was relieved to get home, and have a shower. I felt like the shower cleansed me inside. I thought back to what the mescaline had told me and smiled. I knew I would be okay. I watched TV for the rest of the day until I fell fast asleep. Conclusion I feel I seriously overdid it, but things like this don't happen very often. I will be taking a year's break from psychedelics, and hope to only do mescaline and LSD when I start again.
I came to the realization, that although psychedelics can reveal truths about myself and the world, it is still a drug, and will be used in the pursuit of a high. I vow never to look at psychedelics in this way again, and treat them with the respect they deserve.